Hey, it's me, Vicky Marie. So I'm just doing a little quick uh, short video because I have released one video this morning and later I'll be doing the uh, Serial Killer Sunday. So I don't want to, you know, uh, get on your nerves too much by popping up too much today. Um, but I thought I would do a video just about this what can I say, this scandal that's emerging with Russell Brown, uh, Russell Brand. And it's really, uh, especially for Rustic Rage, because he said she was wondering if I would do a video about it. And I have been thinking about it. And then, I don't know, you just think, when I'm trying to establish what I think of this, now let's have a look at Russell sure you all know who he is anyway look always looks a bit manic doesn't he he's definitely you know what i said about the eyes like he's got those manic eyes where it looks like one is different from the other so you could you know if you got it you know i've always thought you could it would never be surprised if he was a serial killer or something he's just got that mad look about him but probably the drugs haven't helped uh, but, you know, he's got to a point in his life where supposedly he's settled down, hasn't he? He's married, he's got children. Uh, you know, but then, of course, that doesn't excuse past behaviour. You know, so, oh, I don't know. I per personally, I think probably the allegations are true. Uh, I think he was just so zoned out then on drugs and what I mean the thing is fame is a very um you know young women they will put themselves in compromising situations when people they're dazzled they get dazzled by fame not only women men do you know it's um boys it's a it's a very potent you know if you're famous and you've got lots of money it's very potent it's easy to get people into compromising situations and sometimes when they're very young, like some of these are very, very young, I mean, borderline paedophilia, if they're true, if the reports are true. Um, you know, they don't know how to get out of them. And, you know, it's he's got the power, not only that he was older, he's in the power, it's a power control situation again. <sighs> Now, I don't know what his um, what his next step is. Now, I watched the Katie Hopkins video about him as well, and she's saying he's being vilified by the mainstream media, and I do agree with that up to a point. I'll tell you what my problem is with all these things, and not only him, all of them, Hugh Edwards, Philip Schofield, Jimmy Savile, when these things come out, everybody says, oh, yeah, it was an open secret at the BBC or it was an open secret at uh, ITV. So basically what these people are saying, what these mainstream media people are saying, because then so oh, all the journalists knew, everybody knew, Piers Morgan about um, uh, Philip Schofield, oh, well, we all knew that he was having an affair with the runner. They all knew, but nobody did anything. So who is the whistleblower? What? Why is it coming out now? You know, if if it was open secret that he was, you know, practically molesting young girls or you using his power as a celebrity, uh, you know, to to do whatever he was doing, and he was a self-confessed sex addict. He was a self-confessed sex addict, but he says that it was always consensual. You know, I don't know, maybe he thought it was consensual, you know, but it's that fine line, isn't it? And when you're drugged up or drunk or whatever he was, it's hard to tell what that fine line is, I think. Um, and maybe he did go too far, because one of the victims is saying he then texted her all day the next day, uh, apologising, so I don't know if she still get, got those texts. But my main bugbear with this whole thing is... If everybody knew about it, not only him, as I say, Philip Schofield, Hugh Edwards, Jimmy Savile, everyone knew, but nobody said anything. 
so people allowed this to go on now i want to show because my enduring memory of russell brown he's not my favorite comedian to be honest i'm not you know to to me he's always just seemed like a prat to be honest and it's that you know he's like this little boy sort of you know this man boy you know like oh yeah i'm a sex addict and oh yeah i'm really funny and i'm really cool and uh you know, I don't know, it's just, it's never appealed to me, to be honest. I just can't really say any more than that. I know he can be quite funny and he's got better as he's got older. Uh, but no, I can't say that I've ever really liked him, to be honest. And my enduring memory of him, which some of you will remember, I'm going to share this tab. And uh, this is, do you remember the sash gate? or Saxgate um, scandal. So this young girl, Georgina Bailey, the Towers star, Andrew Sachs, who played Manuel. Um, and she had an affair with Russell Brand. And she was only 20 and he was 30. So again, there's a, a, a big age gap. There's a power divide. And then afterwards, he, him and Jonathan Ross, and Jonathan Ross, he got away with it, really, because nothing really, you know, he, I think they apologised in the end. But he and Jonathan Ross thought it was re would be really funny uh, to ring up her grandfather and talk about, you know, having sex with uh, uh, vulgar messages on andrew's answer phone when andrew was her grandfather and he was quite i think he's passed away now andrew is no longer with her uh bragging that branded bedded georgina and I, do you know what i can just imagine them so he was over 30. jonathan ross is old would have been older than that this was in 2008 some of you'll remember it some of you won't remember it because she's now 38 georgina um they you know they were out obviously one night drugged up doped up coked up pissed whatever they were and they decided it would be funny to make this series of prank calls uh to georgina's grandfather who is andrew Sachs, who played manuel in faulty towers for those of you who know faulty towers they thought this would be funny you know like you know i don't know about you, you know i remember when i was a kid we did prank calls from the phone box because i am that old we didn't have a phone at home so uh, we would go to the phone box and look in the phone book it, bear in mind i was about eight at the time or maybe 10 or something and we would look up like for example the surname nightingale and we would ring up and say is florence there you know i just remember once we rang up someone just put, we would just pick a nightingale out of the phone book rang up this poor old guy answered bless him i mean i feel guilty about this to this day and i literally was a child at the time and i said uh, oh is florence there and he said oh he said uh, my sister was called florence but she's passed away well Honest to God, I just felt awful, awful. And I still think about it now and I think, oh, that was awful. And I was a child. So what grown men, Jonathan Ross and Russell Brand, phoning um, Andrew Sachs and saying all these horrible things about Georgina. Now, you know, vulgar things. Imagine someone do when you were like 20, someone ringing your granddad and saying, saying all the things you've done, man or woman, just ridiculous. And so I never really liked him after that. And it put me off Jonathan Ross as well, to be honest. Uh, though I like him a bit better now, Jonathan Ross, he's sort of finally, well, I think he's about 60 now, so I hope he has outgrown his childishness. You know, I remember Jonathan Ross from many, many years ago when he first started. He used to be on the late show, wasn't it? The late night show or the last resort. The last resort, that's it. And it literally was. It was something you'd watch when you got in from the pub drunk. And he was terribly, 
uh, misogynist, sexist. If you watch those that series again, when I think about it now, it makes me shudder. Actually, I thought it was funny at the time because we lived in a different world then. We didn't realise, uh, you know, it was a different world. You could not play those uh, episodes now, and people would be outraged with the things that he did and the way he treated women. So, you know, they're from the ark, aren't they? You know, uh, they, they literally are. They're what, again, these people like Ruby Alice, these men, they've got to realise that those times are gone. Those times are gone that they used to do. You know, women, girls, they're more aware. They won't, you know, they don't like the young people now. They don't like people uh, treating women or men or, you know, homosexuals or, you know, whatever, uh, disrespecting people. You know, it, it, they just don't like it. And I don't know what Russell's going to do. So she does say, she did say, because she did an interview, she's probably been paid for it. Well, you know, there's not many people probably, if they had a chance to make a bit of money, wouldn't do it. Um, but she's only telling the truth, I suppose. But she said, she said it was all consensual, their relationship. They had a brief relationship uh, at the height of his fame. It was consensual. She was not attacked by him. Um, but I do not think about this. I'd seen some rumours about this emerging over the last week that this was going to come out. Anyway. Uh, but she did say, I was a young girl, completely dazzled by celebrity, and I would do anything. And I did. And I do think there's this power balance. You know, where you go with that, I don't know. I mean, she was 20. So, you know, we all think at 20 we know everything, don't we? But it's only as we're older we realise we know fuck all, basically. We knew nothing. All the things our parents warned us against they were right and now we do it again for our children but they don't take any notes of us it's it's almost like a, a, a it's a cycle isn't it you know it's like um that's how it is it's almost seems like that's how it's destined to be you, you don't listen to your parents and then later your kids don't listen to you Anyway, so she was an addict as well. Um, she says, I thought I was, it was, I was just a 20-year-old girl at a party, but looking back on it years later, I was already in the throes of addiction myself. I was really lost back then. And that makes me quite cry, actually, because, uh, you know, young, a lot of young people, they are lost, aren't they? They're lost. So after Sashgate, so what she's saying is after all this came out, because it was a great big, massive thing. You know, I remember that. And probably a lot of you do and some of you maybe don't. But after that, he made millions of pounds doing a stand-up routine about it, about the whole thing. And that was hard and painful for her because she was the butt of the joke. So she was young. She didn't know how to process it. And she turned to drink and drugs. So it took her 10 years to get over it. So she says, I hope these alleged survivors get the help that they need. For about 10 years after Sashgate, it was very hard because I didn't know whether I was in the wrong. So when he apologised, it was a huge weight lifted off me. I must have apologised then in the end. So apparently he went on to apologise to Georgina and he paid for her rehab. Gosh, gosh. So apparently Andrew, then her grandfather, didn't speak to her for eight years. You know, because he was, yeah, this was them. Mm, I remember it. Yeah, they thought it was hilarious. Stupid, stupid man babies. So she said, goes on to say, one of the things he said to me when making his amends was, with great power comes great responsibility. Finally, if he's, that's it, I suppose. But he wasn't that young. I mean, he was 30. Uh, and I didn't realise that before. So, yeah, you know, he has changed. I think I would uh, take that on board that he has changed. So he started to 
become more politic, you know, instead of just making jokes, taking the piss out of everybody, which is what he used to do. He's done, he does quite a lot of satire now, doesn't he, about COVID or about anything that's happening in the world. So as part of the 12-step program, one of the steps is to personally address issues with people who have been harmed by you. But in Russell's case, there are probably so many it's impossible. And he probably doesn't even remember a lot of it. See, that is the thing I would say. I think Russell has probably done these things. He probably doesn't even remember uh you know, he probably only remembers 30% of what he's done. He was so high. He was so high. Yeah, how will he remember it? And yeah, when you're addicted, you don't care about anyone but you. And all you're concerned about is your next fix, whether it's sex, drugs, alcohol. So she says, I can say from personal experience that addiction makes you act appallingly and hurt people. He knows his behaviour towards me was appalling. So she's now an artist living with her mum, Kate, in Bedford. And she says, I have complete empathy for anyone who's a survivor of sexual assault. Well, nothing happened like that to, uh, to me with Russell. I will always believe survivors. See, I, I do tend to believe, you know, uh, why would they, if you think they're doing it for money, is that what they're doing it for? Maybe, I don't know, I don't. Uh, I think it's probably true. I think the things are probably true. But he probably either doesn't even remember them or just didn't realise at the time, you know, what he was doing. And as I say, the other thing that really, really irritates me, these companies, be it BBC, ITV, whoever it is, Instead of fucking co coming out afterwards and saying, uh, oh, yes, well, it was an open secret. Oh, yes, well, we knew that he was doing that for years. No. So, and we, what, you're only just saying that now. This is what makes me angry. And I understand uh, what Katie Hopkins is saying. She's saying, for some reason, now the mainstream media have got it in for Russell Brand, for whatever reason. So now they're saying all these things, and I do agree with that. Because what they're trying to do is get him off mainstream media completely, probably because of what he's saying about COVID and this, that and the other. And I do agree with that, but I do think he probably hasn't done these things. Let's just see if I can, uh, let's have a look at what he actually says, his statement. Uh, he'll be with a lawyer now, won't he? Uh, you know, he'll go into Philip Schofield mode. He'll probably say that if he knows what Caroline Flack feels like. You know, this is what sort of irritates me a little bit. Let's see if we've got... Let me see. Yeah, so before the allegations came out, he made a statement, didn't we? Let's see if I can get a thing. Do you know at, at this stage? Well, this all started very late last night when Russell... Is it on here? Yeah, it's on here. I just want his statement, really. Here it is. This litany of astonishing rather baroque attacks are some very serious allegations that i absolutely refute these allegations pertain to the time when i was working in the mainstream when i was in the newspapers all the time when i was in the movies and as i've written about extensively in my books i was very very promiscuous now during that time of promiscuity the relationships i had were absolutely always consensual now, as i've already mentioned uh, brand does so were they though? Were they though, Russell? Uh, personally, I think perhaps occasionally they weren't, <laughs> or there was a little bit too much, you know, pressure. The the one of the girls is only sixteen, and she's come out with all sorts of things, you know, uh, you know, which I wouldn't even repeat on here. Um, so. 
I don't know what's going to happen. I think Russell, what can he do about it? He can't admit to uh, sexual assault because he's talking about prison then, isn't he? So anyway, I just read before I came on to do this video, his wife has taken her Instagram account down. You know, social media accounts are disappearing. Um, let's see if he's got... Let's try and find that again. Where's the brand? Right, let's see if we can get it on the mirror. Here we go. Probably have an advert book. I want to see his full statement. Oh, I can't find it. <sighs> All right, I think the computer's uh, oh no. Okay, I'll try one more time, if not. I think you've probably most of you have seen it. Like finding one where they won't get you for the copyright because they do tend to get you for the copyright if it on some of them. Ah, oh, this might no. So this is happening. I think that's him. Yeah. Oh, hang on. I've just this is off his own uh, YouTube channel, so let me just share it. where we critique, attack and undermine the news in all its corruption, because in this story, I am the news. I've received two extremely disturbing letters or a letter and an email, one from a mainstream media TV company, one from a newspaper listing a litany of extremely egregious and aggressive attacks, as well as some pretty stupid stuff like uh, my community festival should be stopped, that I shouldn't be able to attack mainstream media narratives on this channel. But amidst this litany of astonishing, rather baroque attacks are some very serious allegations that I absolutely refute. These allegations pertain to the time when I was working in the mainstream, when I was in the newspapers all the time, when I was in the movies. And as I've written about extensively in my books, I was very, very promiscuous. Now, during that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. I was always transparent about that then, almost too transparent. And I'm being transparent about it now as well. And to see that transparency metastasized into something criminal that I absolutely deny makes me question is there another agenda at play? Particularly when we've seen coordinated media attacks before, like with Joe Rogan, when he dared to take a medicine that the mainstream media didn't approve of. And we saw a spate of headlines from media outlets across the world using the same language. I'm aware that you guys have been saying in the comments for a while, watch out, Russell, they're coming for you. You're getting too close to the truth. Russell Brand did not kill himself. I know that a year ago there was a spate of articles. Russell Brand's a conspiracy theorist. Russell Brand's right wing. I'm aware of news media making phone calls, sending letters to people I know for ages and ages. It's been clear to me, or at least it feels to me like there's a serious and concerted agenda to control these kind of spaces and these kind of voices. And I mean my voice along with your voice. I don't mind them using my books and my stand up to talk about my promiscuous consensual conduct in the past. What I seriously refute are these very, very serious criminal allegations. Also, it's worth mentioning that there are witnesses whose evidence directly contradicts the narratives that these two mainstream media outlets are trying to construct, apparently in what seems to me to be a coordinated attack. Now, I don't want to get into this any further because of the serious nature of the allegations, but I feel like I'm being attacked and plainly they are working very closely together. We are obviously going to look into this matter because it's very, very serious. In the meantime, I want you to stay close, stay awake, but more important than any of that, if you can, please stay free. Hmm, 
interesting, isn't it? Very interesting. I mean, I, I do agree with him up to a point. I think he is probably being shut down. And this is what I was saying to you earlier. What irritates me, I think there's probably some truth in these things, but, uh, you know, because he, he was just so blitzed out of his mind. No, it's not. But the, the irritating thing for me is, yeah, they all knew he was doing all this for all this time. They can't have only just found this out. So why now? Why now are they bringing it all up? Same with Philip Schofield. Same with uh, Hugh Edwards, though they were part of the mainstream media. You know, there's something, there's something like there's some sort of undercurrents going on. And it's like with Katie Hopkins, you know, and I agree with Katie Hopkins in many things and many things I don't agree with her. And he's the same. He called her a Nazi. She mentioned that in the video where she talked about, uh, you know, what she thought about what had happened to him. <laughs> you know, because you know, some of her views are so extreme and there are views of hers that I don't agree with, but doesn't mean to say that I don't agree with her on everything. I found out today about a lot, you know, the video that I did about the XL bully dog. People can't just have a, a debate about things. You know, they're attacking. The, the, there was maybe two, actually there were three people who said about the ex-bully dogs should be banned and this. And they were so aggressive in the way they said it. You know, if, if you, yeah, people do have concerns about big dogs. Some of my subscribers, some of my chatters, they said, oh, yeah, you know, I'm on the fence about this or I've, you know, I am a little bit scared of these dogs because they're big. Fair enough. That is fair enough. That is putting your point over in a nice way, having a debate respectful to the, the person who loves ex bully dogs or whatever. I'm probably in the middle. You know, uh, uh, they're lovely, the ones that, you know, I, I personally would not have one because uh, I probably would, you know, I've always been, I think as I mentioned, I was scared of German Shepherds before I got the German Shepherd, but I'm sure if I had one, you know, and you fall in love with them, there's a reason why they're the most popular dogs at the moment, they're so popular. There, there's a reason for it. Anyway, I don't want to get into all that again because I'll probably get another load of trolling. Uh, so I've had to get rid of um, two. Well, I only got rid of two uh, people today. No, do you just think, why can't you... What's wrong with someone? That, like, for example, if I'm watching Katie Hopkins and then uh, she'll come up with one of her videos about immigrants or whatever, I never like those. I just don't watch it. You know, I don't go on and troll her and say, oh, this is wrong and that's wrong. And I used to like you, but I can't be doing it. No, she's doing her thing. That's her YouTube channel. She's doing her thing. You know, I, I wouldn't expect her to come onto my YouTube channel and say to me, oh, you shouldn't be doing this video. It's her YouTube channel. If you don't like it, go and make your own YouTube channel. Gosh, I've gone off on a, a, a rant. I didn't mean to do that. So this is what Russell's got to say. So let me know what you think. This would probably be another contentious one. I might have a little look at uh, Katie's video, actually, while I'm on. See what she says. Oh, she, oh God, she was up at the crack of dawn this morning, which is not, it's not what she normally does. Let's say. She was literally, because, you know, I get up at six or something, and she was up. Before that, well, I say before that because you now I presume she's in the UK. I'm not sure where she is at the moment because she does tend to uh, travel around. So she was up at the crack of dawn this morning with this video. So she obviously feels strongly about it. Okay. Planet that happened to me many moons ago, but perhaps oh, sorry, I've just got to go perhaps. back to the beginning. So it is early, and I can barely see through my own eyes. But I thought it was important to state a few things about Russell Brand. Number one, Russell Brand always said he had sex addiction. He's written about it. He's documented it. It's something that was in his past. And he may have had more sex with more people than others, almost, but he was never trying to hide all of that. I'm sure many of the finger pointing 
good and great wouldn't like all of their past dug up and put on camera either. Second, if you want to make a documentary with shocking evidence about someone you're trying to take down and you tell people they can sit in the shadows and not have to show their faces. Well, so I've just stopped it because I noticed this icon came up in the corner. I don't want to get done for... Uh, I've played Katie Hopkins' videos before and I've never been pulled up for anything, but you just never know. So if I stop it and start it, I've got less chance. Uh, but that was interesting as well, what she said there. These people are in the shadows, so they've got, they should come forward and they should um, be named. I agree with that. They should say, look, they, you know, openly not all this secrecy for them i don't agree with that because at the end of the day he's been brought out into the open so you know they shouldn't have a right to do that without having to say who they are i do agree with that well you know many people would be prepared to do that because if you can't see the person it's also hard to see their truth isn't it and you'll notice that the left the guardian the Olympic Committee, everybody, they loved Russell. I remember when Russell... I don't like the way she always blames it on the left. It's not the left. It's all the mainstream media. It's not just the Guardian. You know, the, the story broke in the Times, I think, for God's sake. So, you know, why she's sort of landing on the left, I don't know. Broke into my LBC radio studios to call me a Nazi. The left loved Russell at that time and they couldn't promote him more heavily. They thought he was absolutely fantastic. It's not until he started spitting facts on COVID that they decided he had to be got rid of, particularly after he appeared on American TV screens talking truth about Big Pharma and the billionaires that have been created with your tax revenue. Yeah, but that's not the letter. She's right. That's the government. How many in the government, the people that profited out of the Conservative government for PPE um, and also for Big Pharma, Rishi Sunak. Now he's got an interest in the Moderna, but he was being questioned about it the other day and he would not say yes or no as to whether he had a financial interest in the Moderna uh, vaccine. So she's right, but it's not just the left, the left are not actually in government. And now they're coming out and saying that he reverse engineered his move over to the freedom movement. He reverse engineered speaking out for people who disagreed with lockdowns, who see what's coming, who know that they're trying to take control away from the people. They're saying he reverse engineered this in order to try and build up a cultist following so that when all of this came out, he would have cover. I mean, if you're playing a game of top tenuous, that's about as tenuous as it gets. And the truth, because mainstream isn't that clever, the Guardian aren't that clever, is that Channel 4 heavily promoted brand all the time. I'm just wondering why she keeps uh, going on about The Guardian, because as far as I know, this came out in The Times. And that they wanted to. Now, the establishment has been looking for revenge. Revenge for Hugh Edwards. They've wanted someone from our side, the side that simply wants everyone to be OK, to pick off. And so they just regurgitated old shit about Russell. They found some people willing to sit in the dark and say stuff that pretty much Russell had already fessed up to already and now that he's a clean I don't really agree with her on this because uh, I do agree that people should come out but I think I don't think Russell had ever admitted to raping a 16 year old girl up against a wall or you know things like that without a, you know so I don't agree with that I think these are new things that are coming out Russell he did say he was promiscuous um in fact a sex addict but um he never said that he'd done any of these things so these are new things living guy certainly cleaner living than i am um with a happy and stable life and a sold out tour and a successful media platform still he has to be culled 
Yeah, I agree with that. You know, he's settled down now. He's married. He's got children. I think his wife's pregnant at the moment. He's doing well on the because people want to go and watch him. They want to go listen to him. He did. Um, I think it was last night, wasn't it? He went and did a, a stand-up uh, show, though. He was late arriving for it, and it was shorter than it would have been normally. Uh, he said to them that he couldn't really comment on everything because it'll all be with the lawyers now. And if there's one thing I do know about, it's being completely eviscerated from the face of the planet. It happened to me many moons ago, but perhaps, just perhaps, we've been around long enough now for other people to see what's being done. You don't have to support Russell. You don't have to love Russell. You don't have to say that that maybe happened. Yeah, I think it's true. She was, you know, she... She did say quite a lot of extreme things, of course. A lot of people um, don't like her. As I say, I don't like everything she says, but there's a lot of things she says that I do definitely agree with. And that, that really, I think what's happening now is, um, you know, the world is changing. In a way, we're becoming more democratic, if you like. But it's beyond borders, isn't it? Because it's over social media now. So the mainstream media, and I've said this before, and I do really believe this, they are so threatened by social media now because the mainstream media, people have cottoned on, you know, that what you see on the BBC is not true. What you see on Sky News is not always true. What you see on a lot of news stations uh, is a certain narrative and you're not really shown the full picture of anything and people have realized this i think and so they're turning more and more to social media for the news and so i think she's right like that i think they're threatened and i think as soon as they get an opportunity to off someone like uh russell you know it's ironic really because i'll probably start watching him more i never was i haven't watched him for ages but i probably will start watching him more now thinking that he's changed so i didn't like him as he was before you know, all that with Jonathan Ross and those bloody, you know, acting like, you know, stupid bloody kids, teenagers, phone, you know, phoning up, making those prank calls and that. Put me off him. So I haven't had anything, to, I haven't really watched anything to do with him since then. So if anything, this has made me want to watch him more. There been a few issues in the past like they have in all of our lives. But please see what's being done to him. They want to eviscerate him from the planet, and I know it personally. They will keep coming until he swings from a tree. And as a father to two children and one unborn as yet, I think it's very important that Russell understands that every day he prevails, every day he persists, is a day that he wins. And actually, it doesn't matter what people say you are, even Russell calling me a Nazi. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters, Russell, actually, is that you know who you are. And as long as you know that you're a good person and you've tried to do the right thing by most people, then everything will be okay. So to Russell Brown from me, um, keep going. And to everybody else out there who's willing to see that you shouldn't be eviscerated purely because of your opinions, Thank you very much for helping support someone and keeping them going. Okay, more soon. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. You know, you do get, um, you know, you give an opinion and you people sometimes just, you know, like I say with these bloody dogs, all these people saying about how aggressive the dogs are, they're aggressive, so aggressive in the way they can't just have a normal debate about something. So, yeah, as long as you know you're not a bad person, as long as you know you're trying your best and you're just saying what you think without, you know, intentionally trying to hurt anyone or damage anyone. But this is the problem, though. I do think there is a problem here because I think when Russell was in his, you know, drugged up days, etc., I think he may well have done some things that he shouldn't have done. That is the only thing. Now what we have to decide is where do we decide well that's the past you know that's the past or do we 
you know, does he have to be held accountable for them even now, even though he's changed his life around and he is no longer that person. But I, I think he's probably done. These won't be the last ones now. You know what it's like. As soon as one starts, they all come out the woodwork. So I bet, you know, if he was that promiscuous and for that long, he took that many drugs, uh, there's going to be more. So that's my opinion for uh, Rachel. <laughs> um, for what it's worth, that's what I think. I think he probably has done these things. The question now is, but I do think, you know, the mainstream media who apparently have known about it all this time. I'm really annoyed with them. You know, just the same with Savile, Schofield, Edwards. They, and it makes you wonder how many are out there. How many more Russell Brands, Philip Schofields, Hugh Edwards, Jimmy Savile's, Cliff Richards, who has never been proven to be, but you know, how many more are there that everybody knows about but nobody will talk about until eventually they either die or somebody does come out and talk and then everyone jumps on the bandwagon or they become a threat to the mainstream media, to these huge corporations. That would be what I would say about it. Anyway, I'll be back on soon with the Serial Killer Sunday. Uh, um, you're probably sick of the sight of me now, but anyway, there you go. I will see you really soon in the next video. And until then, may your God go with you. Bye.